Welcome everyone. I'm glad you guys made it in safely today. This snowy weather. Um, my name is Ray Miele. I have my master's in uh, traditional Chinese medicine and I also have my master's degree in um, public health. Um, I basically started out um, in the Navy, went to massage therapy school, ended up going to Santa Cruz, California, did two and a half years of acupuncture there, um, school, and then transferred to Oregon College of Oriental Medicine, where I did four years there. So I have a total of six and a half years of education in acupuncture. Um, so basically, we're going to um, it'll be a, basically a brief history of acupuncture, how it works, the different types of acupuncture, um, what acupuncture could be used for, the costs, and then some. I'll give you some case histories of what I used acupuncture for. I was actually very skeptical about acupuncture, um, and that's why I went to school for it. And I've seen some pretty amazing things happen with it. So, um, basically, the Chinese medicine is based on the Yin Yang theory. So it's like fluids and energy, and so um, acupuncture tries to balance those, um, those uh, the, the Yin and and the the Yang out. So um, it's been around for three thousand plus years. So. Um, and actually in China, they um, incorporate that into their Western medicine also. So this is not how it started, but, um, <laughs> you know, I'm sure it started with, like, somebody had, you know, a thorn in, you know, in their hand or something, and all of a sudden they noticed that their neck pain went away and started to experiment with that. And, and, and uh, So um, here in the United States, it became, people started, to recognize it when this guy here, um, James Reston, was he's a New York Times reporter and he um, had appendicitis while he was in China. Um, once he had his appendix removed, um, they were doing acupuncture on him with the pain and then he came back um, to the United States and, and wrote an article on it. So, um, so basically, this is very quick because this is, you know, six and a half years of education, so this is really uh, the yin yang theory. Um, you kind of clear heat out of the body, so like, you know, arthritis and stuff like that, we kind of clear the heat or moisten um, the uh, um, dryness and so on and so forth. So we move blood, um, you know, warm up cold conditions. For example, like, um, I had an infertility issue, uh, uh, a lady that came in, and we did acupuncture and tried every different things with her, um, and then I ended up doing moxa, um, for what we call cold in the womb, and she was able to get pregnant. So, so what is chi? People ask us all the time, what is chi, right? What is this, what is this chi stuff? So um, I look at it as like frequencies or electromagnetic energy that travels through what we call these um, uh, meridians. Um, they were at first considered to be like invisible. The meridians were invisible, but they just recently done research where they um, injected uh, nanoparticles in acupuncture points have, and have actually seen the particles travel through these meridians, which is not like the blood vessels or the, the lymph nodes. So. Um, so what are meridians? I just kind of touched a little bit basis on that. There's like 12 major meridians that acupuncture looks at. Um, and then there's several different types of uh, extraordinary meridians that the chi um, runs through and through the organs and stuff. So this is an example of some meridians. This here would be like your gallbladder um, and kidney meridian um, in the legs, and they travel throughout the whole body. So, and some people like when I'm checking their pulses, and and I notice that there's some gallbladder issues in that meridian a lot of times they'll say, well, my gallbladder has been removed, but um, those meridians still exist. There's, you know, the somato um, sensory cortex in the brain. Um, so there's, that's, it's kind of like phantom pain in a sense. So how do we achieve balance? You know, um, acupuncturists um, do acupuncture. There's also herbal medicine, uh, tai chi and qigong, nutrition, um, cupping, um, and electrostimulation. So this is not where acupuncture needles come from. Um, a lot of people are really scared about acupuncture, or about the, the needles, um, and they're very, very tiny. Um, I've worked on babies before. Um, I actually had to work on my niece once where um, she would, her bob movements would get stuck on the way out and she would scream. She was in a tremendous amount of pain. 
and my brother and my sister-in-law explained to me like what I had to do and I'm like there's no way you know like I'm not going to do that Uncle Ramey's not doing that and so um I was watching her and it happened when I was watching her and I was floored I was like what do I you know and so I said baby you're gonna have to push right you're just uh, Uncle Ramey's so I end up um doing acupuncture for an LI 11 and it she instantaneously I had a bowel movement I'm not sure if it's because the needle scared her and <laughs> to have the bowel movement or or what, but um, it happened on the second occasion at my mom, so I'm not quite sure if, you know, so it was that quick, just one needle and I left. And so um, this is some herbal medicine um, that we use. Um, it kind of stinks and doesn't taste all that great, but it does pretty, you know, wonders. So um, acupuncture side had to learn over 300 herbs and 200 different or, uh, formulas, so it's pretty complex. Um, Moxa stick, um, I used this one time I was getting ready to go play soccer and I'd injured my ankle really bad and um, was wondering what am I going to do because I'm not going to be able to play. So I ended up doing some Moxa and seeing, well, does this stuff work, right? Like, you know, I'm very skeptical and have a scientific mind and uh, it helped, so. Um, Moxa would do um, direct with a, the gal that had infertility issues. Um, I put it directly um, on the skin um, and you light it and then I, you know, take it off when they start to feel it. So this is actually on the needles. Cupping, um, I don't know if any of you have watched the Olympics, but um, Michael Phelps um, had the, the dark circles around his shoulders. That was cupping. Um, I used to not use cupping all that much, but then I, I would do acupuncture and then the you know, the results would plateau out, and then I'd do electrostimulation stimulation, would help start plateauing out. And then I started running into difficulties where it was like, okay, we're here, now what? So cupping worked really well. Actually, I actually had a client who um, we tried everything, and I was basically saying, I told her husband, you're going to have to take her to the emergency room. And um, so we tried cupping, and uh, it, it worked, and I was excited just as much as she was about it because I never know if this is going to work or not. I mean, uh, nutrition is a very important part of um, um, traditional Chinese medicine. Um, we believe that a lot of it stems from the stomach, and hypocrisy also says that all diseases starts from from the stomach. So, um, when you come in, that's another thing that I talk about with my with my uh, clients is is nutrition. So, Tai Chi Qigong, you see a lot of that in China. I've never been to China, but I've heard a lot of stories about. Um, the parks in China where the elderly are constantly doing Tai Chi and Qigong and they have, they're in better shape than I am. So, um, you know, they must be doing something correct. Um, so the other major question is how acupuncture works, right? Like, so there's, you know, the placebo people believe, okay, acupuncture is, you know, a lot of placebo, which is, is true. There are some placebo effects to that. Um, but there's endorphins that are released. They've done studies where they check the blood before and after, and the nitrous oxide levels have increased, so it allows new blood into the area. Um, they've done MRIs, uh, so before and afterwards, and seen that certain parts of the brains are being stimulated, um, which then correspond to whatever disease is going on. Um, so overall, there's still some skeptics of how does it work. Right? So here's certain parts of the brains that are being stimulated when um, acupuncture is being um, stimulated in certain parts of the body. So, here's some images of acupuncture, bef you know, a healthy brain and then acupuncture being done. So, then there's several different types of acupuncture. There's medical acupuncture where, um, like, DOs and MDs practice, and that's about 200 hours roughly that they, they get. Um, then there's the Japanese style, and they do like more of um, hard diagnosis, they check around the stomach area and then determine from there. They're also like made, you know, do some incense around the feet area and, and count the number of times that, that that person can't feel it and then determine from there like what meridian to use. So then there's auricular acupuncture. Um, this was uh, basically took off by a, a French neurologist in the 60s because he had, his patients would come in and they have cauterization. Excuse me in their ears and he asked them what's the cauterization in the ears for and and uh, they said for to help with the pain so about 15 years he 
um, designed a, a machine that he was able to um, measure the frequencies of organs, and so he, he was able to map out the ear um, when he would stimulate certain parts of the ear, the frequencies in those organs would change. And then in 1980, UCLA, they it was about 75% accurate at looking at like 40 patients looking inside their ears, and they to determine where that pain was at in that person. So um, then there's NADA, um, which is basically a five-point protocol that they do for um, people who are addicted to like opioids or different types of uh, um, or alcohol and so on and so forth. So um, this is actually being used in like drug courts, rehab um, centers, and uh, they're showing a high success rate with um, people who are going through withdrawals and stuff. So then there's scalp acupuncture. There's um, a doctor in Santa Cruz, California, Dr. Zhu, who was doing scalp acupuncture for paralysis patients and um, was getting some really amazing results with that. Um, what I noticed was that maybe it was last for like three days, right? So someone had paralysis in, in their arm, like he would do scalp acupuncture, able to move their arm after three days and they were able to move it again. So um, yeah, yeah, exactly, right? It's like how does this stuff work? And, um, so um, actually I've seen a, um, a patient who was uh, quadriplegic, basically feeding to the whole works, and she's now able to move her hands, her feet, tubes and stuff are out. So, but she also had a very strong mindset, like she was very determined um, to get better, and I think that had a lot to do with it also. So. Five Elements is a very in-depth, um, basically they're using different seasons, different times of the day, certain organs, certain smells that people put off, certain colors around their face. Um, I have a really very strong background in this um, area, um, and they use maybe a very few to, amount of needles. Um, they might put the needle in, take it out. So, and then electrostimulation. Um, I was kind of anti-electrostimulation because I figured, okay, you know, I should be able to get the job done with that just by putting a needle in, right? One day, my um, brother was playing volleyball, and his um, his partner basically came off and said, I'd injure my knee, like I have 10 minutes before I can get back out, is there anything you can do? And I'm like, well, I'll try, right? Like I hooked him up, hooked him up with extra stimulation, he comes back and he was said, the pain was gone, he was able to jump higher than he's ever jumped before, but I'm not quite sure if, <laughs> if that was the case or not, but there was no uh, research done on that. But uh, um, So he was excited about it and then I became like, okay, maybe I should use this more often. Um, in cases where I'm, you know, at that plateau of like, okay, this is not working. So, um, so I basically already talked about a lot of this stuff, the Japanese style. Here's the, the hard diagnosis, auricular, it's a map of an, an infant. Um, this is the doctor, Dr. Paul Nogier, um, the French neurologist who basically mapped out the ear. Um, NADA. Um, so it basically started like in, you know, the big cities, like, New York and California, and then it's kind of spread from there. Um, so they also use them in methadone clinics. I've actually gone to methadone clinics and, and have done some regular acupuncture in the methadone clinics. Scalp acupuncture, um, you can see here. I've actually seen, as we see an animal here, I've seen, so, because I am very scientific mind and I come, I'm very skeptical, but I've seen them do acupuncture on horses and seen, um, the horse is kind of like, ooh, you know, like, ooh, that, you know, felt good, and and, um, <laughs> and so they were able to, uh, and it was because the lady wasn't able to ride the horse because when they put the saddle on, um, it became very just, you know, uncomfortable for the horse, and so they're able to ride the horse the next day after the acupuncture. So, um, this is five elements. This is very in depth. You know, there's like I said, certain times of, of the day that those organs are the um, the strongest, um, and so this is just uh, some some times on that. Um, like I said, how in-depth it is, I mean, you really, you know, you're talking about the different elements, um, you know, that correspond with, with uh, organs with different, um, like, for example, the kidneys would be bones, lungs would be like the skin, and so on and so forth. So, um, I mean, this is very, very in-depth and very in, in you know, it took several years to really get an idea, just an idea, really, how it works. But um, here's some like stimulations being done. Um, I'm sure some of you guys heard of like 10 units, stuff like that, similar to that. Mm -hmm. so, 
that's what I tell people when they, they're like, lack of stimulation, oh, that's just going to do, like, shock me inside. It's, it's like a 10 June, so. Um, so, how they diagnose it to TCM, we take a look at the tongue, um, and we check the pulses. And then we look at, like, complexions around their face when you get into five elements, and then certain smells. Um, that people come in. I mean, I don't go up and sniff people, right? Like, you know, like ah, well, you smell like a metal element. <laughs> like, that's not that's not the case. It's like when they walk in the room, you know, there's a certain smell, and then you're like, oh, okay, this is an earth element or a metal element or a wood element. And then they kind of design the how you're going to work with that person around that element. So, um, exciting looking at tongue. I've been pretty pretty accurate. There's like. This is really exciting, but I like a little bump on the side of the tongue. When I see that, I ask a person about depression. And almost every single time, there's, they have depression. So, um, you know, and I'll show you, like, the tongue a little bit. Like, the tip is the heart, and, you know, the sides are liver and, and gallbladder and so on and so forth. Um, the pulses are really exciting to me. Um, there's actually Leon Hammer. Um, he was a DO at, at MSU. And he uh, basically basically perfected the, the, the pulse diagnosis and able to determine what was going on in people's bodies before even symptoms showed up, right? Like, okay, there's a blockage in the heart. He was able to determine that just by the pulse diagnosis. I mean, I've been able to determine sex of babies by checking the pulses, uh, abnormal cells in uterus, um, parasites in gallbladder. So it's really very exciting, you know, because I'm... Uh, like I said, a scientific mind, and don't understand why this works, but it does. Right? So, so this is an example of the tongue. And actually, I found a book once, um, and then I lost it. But it had a lot of uh, Western um, Western diagnosis. <laughs> that was pretty fun. <laughs> but uh, um, it had Western diagnostics, right? Looking at the tongue and different um, things that showed up on the tongue, and then it corresponded with Western diagnosis. So I've that was really, I need, a, I need to research and try to find that book again because it was pretty, pretty awesome. So, um, like you see in the middle of the tongue, spleen and stomach area, then lung and heart. Um, so usually when I look at the tip and it's bright red and somebody asks about their sleep or, you know, you know, uh, a lot of other different things that are going on. So, um, like I said about the complexions, this is some of the areas that we're looking at. Um, when people walk in, if I see like a, like a tint of green here, and I asked the person, how are you doing today? And they're like, I'm fine, you know, I'm good. Um, and I checked their pulses and they're rapid. A lot of times they're, you know, they're on the, the crabbier side. So <laughs> so it's good to know, like, when patients walk in, you're like, ooh, they're crabby today, right, before they even <laughs> say anything. Like, yeah. yep, like, okay, let's work on that. <laughs> Here's some of the smells. Like I said, I, it's it, about when the patient walks in and then you can – you know, certain smells that, that come up. So. so if they stink, like, they, so if they smell rotten, like, that's an actual, like, classification? Yeah, so, well, I wouldn't say, like, okay, so, like, rotten would be, because it's hard to, to say, like, okay, that person smells rotten. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, you know, like, so it's very distinct smells, like, oh, there's a sweet smell, right, earth, or there's, like, a woody smell and so on, or a rancid, like, so, um, how to, like, say, okay, that's that smell is kind of, kind of difficult right? okay. yeah. you know, and after time once you start smelling those certain smells then you're like okay that's that element it's easier right? it's easier yeah, okay. to understand so yeah yeah it's not like ooh, this person is like halfway dead <laughs> yeah right, right. Like, <laughs> yeah no like, okay. yeah, so and it's not it's it's like with the pulses it's very like it's very fine right uh -huh. so you, you just start to enhance these senses of your own senses right? oh, okay. okay so it's like Oh, okay, I can, I can smell that. So, you all smell good. You don't smell rotten. Or anything. <laughs> like, you guys are all like, like, don't even go talk to him. Yeah. He's like going to sniff me. Right? So, <laughs> um, so pulse diagnosis. So the right hand, we're taking a look at, like, in the, there's, like, three positions, um, you know, that we're looking at. And so the top position on the right, the long, large intestine, then stomach and spleen, and then um, pericardium and gynecological. Then on the left side, similar, so it's heart, small intestine, gallbladder, and liver, urinary bladder, and kidney. And then there's certain depths, right? So there's at the very superficial, middle, and then deep, and that corresponds to like what we call the outer energy, inner energy. So it's like basically the 
out here and then the blood and then in even deeper. So, um, and then there's several different quality of pulses. There might be a slippery pulse or um, tight pulse. So there's, it, it's very in depth, like I said. And, and so, um, so like I said, quality of pulses, um, you know, certain strength or, okay, I'm pushing here and all of a sudden it disappears. Or I could tell people that smoke marijuana because in the liver gallbladder, in the liver area, I check that pulse, right? And then I push it and it just, it's like almost like an inflated ball or balloon, right? And it just is gone. So, um, so like each session is based on like symptoms and pulses. I come up with the goal for for whoever I'm working with. Like, okay, what do you what's your expectations, right? Like, what do you expect out of this? Um, a lot of times they say, how long is this going to last? I don't know, right? Like, I say three days to forever, right? Hopefully that's what we're trying to get at is to that point, but. Um, sometimes that they can feel worse than better afterwards, and I've, I'm glad I've told people that because I have a client that I've been working with for 10 years that probably would never came back to me if I didn't tell him that. So, because he felt horrible afterwards, and he told me he's like, "Thank you for telling me that because I probably wouldn't have came back." You know, so, um, and then like duration. Some people are in there after 30 minutes, they're ready for the needles to come out. They don't, they don't want them any longer. Some people want to stay in there a lot longer. So. Number of needles determines a lot of times I'll swab, you know, several areas, maybe not do those points, but then, um, but then something pops and like, oh, you know, they might say something to me, right? Like, oh, I have this also going on, then go ahead and, and, um, you know, do some more, um, needles in those areas. And so like somebody might come in for shoulder pain, but they might have several other things going on. We can address all those things at once. So it's not just the shoulder pain that we're working with. Um, so yeah, so here's once again, my lower back pain went away. But uh, actually I have some pretty interesting stories. So World Health Organization, they have a list of different things that um, acupuncture, starting from the top down, like the, the number of research on these different areas. And that's a whole nother topic of like the randomized control studies. How do you do, how do you have a control, right? How do you do a sham acupuncture when people know that a needle's going in? So there's a lot of, um, that's, that's the, the argument when it comes to the, the science behind acupuncture. So, so here's some more. Um, I know it's, I'm going to go through it quickly, but guys. So initial costs are anywhere from 65 to 180. Some depending on what city you're in, it may even be a lot more than that. Um, you know, I try to keep my costs low because I don't accept insurance, um, and that's another thing I'll talk about. Um, and I usually have the, them contact their insurance company and work that out with their insurance companies, and then so I don't so I can keep my costs low. So bartering may bartering may be accepted. I always I love bartering because one of my clients on a farm would bring, I had no idea what was going to be brought to me every week, right? Like, I don't know if it was going to be eggs or honey or, or what, and so that was pretty exciting, so. Um, just think about that when you guys get into practices. Insurance coverage, these are some veterans are covered. Um, so I do have an MPI number, and that's um, uh, so I can work with, with veterans per se, because I, I myself am, am a veteran. So, so 